All right, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Jack Lyons. I'm from San Francisco, California, and I run Pythia. Awesome, and when did you get started on Pythia? I got started in Pythia my junior year of college. That was so the end of 2018, early 2019. Awesome, and where does the name Pythia come from? I learned about the Pythia in a college course. The Pythia was the high priestess of the temple of Apollo. So if a person wanted to go ask the god Apollo a question, they would go ask the Pythia. And when I started the brand, I didn't want to be known at all. I didn't want to be the face of the brand at all. So I was going to use the Pythia as my way of speaking to the people just like how Apollo did. Awesome. And how did you initially get started making clothing? I just bought a sewing machine. Um, <laughs> I really liked Shark Tank growing up and still do. And I had this idea of putting zippers on the back of my Converse, which made me go to Joanne Fabrics and buy a hundred dollar sewing machine. And it wasn't made for shoes, but I still like jerry rigged it in and jammed that shoe in and figured it out. But yeah, I just bought a sewing machine. That's wild. And like, where did you learn how to sew? Did you know how to sew before this or did you teach yourself on the fly? Originally, I taught myself on the fly, just with YouTube videos. Um, the hardest part for me was getting it threaded, like just figuring out where the thread goes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, once I got past that, it was all trial and error, just messing up a bunch. And then maybe like a, a half a year way, half a year in, my grandma showed me some tips and that helped me get past a few things. But after that, yeah, it was just all YouTube and trial and error. Dope. And were you always into like fashion and art when you were growing up? Is that always big for you? Um, I had little stints with it, like in middle school, I was going around my neighborhood taking photos and making videos and stuff like that. Um, I was always like an internet kid really though. I was never really creative or into art, but I was always on YouTube, always making videos, playing games, stuff like that. So I think that's what got me into internet business and like running an online brand is that early kind of internet spike. Awesome, and talk about your early pieces. So were all those made by hand, one of ones? Yeah, so I started off with Converse. I bought 10 pairs of Converse on Black Friday of 2018. And my plan was, I didn't even have a sewing machine at the time yet, but I was like, I'm gonna figure out how to get zippers on these. So shoes, and then I bought pants and some hoodies just to sew fabric onto. And that's what started the one of one hoodies right there. Awesome, and like what appeals to you about making one of one pieces in general? Uh, I think it's really special because, especially when you're a small brand, it lets you connect with that customer. So I was having one-on-one -on -one conversations while giving them a one-on-one -on -one piece. Um, at the beginning, I couldn't afford manufacturing costs and I wanted to make some crazy things. So I couldn't afford making 200 crazy pieces because that's expensive. So I was going to make one, figure it out myself. And then the goal with it was I called them all prototypes. So all my one-on-ones are like, I think I'm on like 70 now. So. Every single one's a prototype and I called them prototypes so that when I could afford to go bulk run with them, I had all these prototypes already designed to send to the manufacturer and they can just recreate it. And so at what point did you start actually going into that manufacturing and doing that? Pretty quick. Um, I'd say like a year in, I got into, I started with printing and just stuff like that. So screen printing, embroidery, that kind of stuff is the first thing I started getting done in the states and then now that i found some like overseas manufacturers that i can trust i now draw my designs and i can get them made overseas to perfection which is really awesome so out of all the one of ones that you've made so far like which one is your favorite i'd say the butterfly pieces just because that was my first time like drawing on fabric cutting it out and making like a piece of art with it you know like i on those hoodies, I saw them as paintings and I was like creating kind of a, a garden. So that's why they're called the garden hoodies because uh, they have different strands of grass, flowers, butterflies. So I'm not a good drawer or a painter or anything of that sort, but I can put fabric together to make kind of my art. Awesome, awesome. And kind of in that vein of like just making the butterfly pieces, for example, like where do you draw inspiration from for the pieces that you create? Just my environment. I. Uh, I get this question asked like pretty often. I have no explanation of where my vision comes from. It's just day to day. If I see something I think is cool, I'll throw it in my notes and then I'll try and work on something around that. But yeah, it's just with the garden pieces, just walking around like my backyard and stuff like that. That's awesome. And you have a pretty unique drop structure because right now you're making pieces that are manufactured and screen printed, um, but you're still making these one of ones kind of when you're in the 
in between different drops. Like what's the idea behind that structure right now? Yeah, so the big drops, my way of getting in people's closets and expanding the brand as much as I can because that's what truly brings me happiness is like having people wear my clothes and uh, I can't make one-on-ones for everyone, but the one-on-ones are there for me just to keep experimenting and um, making clothes, which is what I really like to do. So I make one-on-ones when I'm waiting for orders to get shipped or things are in production. And then when it's a drop time, then I'm focused on pushing that drop out. Awesome. And is it one of your goals to have your pieces in everyone's closet? Definitely. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so talk about kind of the idea behind the, if you can make someone's day, you should sing. Like, how did that saying come to be? How did you come up with that? Yeah, definitely. Um, in college, I uh, was walking to class one day and I just told someone that their outfit was hard. And it was just a really simple gesture, but it made me feel good. And I was like, this is kind of like a hack to have a good day every day is if I just randomly tell someone I like their outfit. And uh, I just started using that, like it would help me have a good day. So I'd start my day off with trying to make someone else's day and it kind of just expanded into paying for someone's food behind me in and out. Just like one thing a day was fine. And I posted it on my story. If you can make someone's day, you should. And it stuck with me. And then it came to my idea, like I could put this in my Instagram bio. And if someone doesn't follow the page or whatever, but if they stumble across it and that quote gets stuck in their head, then there's like this passive forward effect of people like making other people's day. And I think it just trickles down all the way. And so what made you want to rent that huge billboard in San Francisco and put the saying up there? So that billboard is down the street from my parents' house in San Francisco. Um, it was in, it's mostly like an Asian neighborhood. So it's inside of like an Asian supermarket in the parking lot. And it was just really ugly billboards all the time. And I thought like all these people have to drive in this parking lot, see this billboard every day. So if I put my quote there, maybe it'll help the neighborhood make a little difference. And it was really cool to see what it did because I put it up and I, when I first went to go like see it, people were staring at it. Like it was really weird. The store owner came out and asked me if I had anything to do with it, which I did. So I met him. Um, and then every time I drive by it, there would be like people sitting under it or taking photos. So it was really cool. Um, I want to make it a thing that I'll put a billboard within walking distance of like wherever I live when I first moved there. I haven't done it in LA yet. So I'm looking for that spot right now, but yeah, it's been awesome. That's awesome, man. And speaking of LA, at some point you were in Arizona when you started Pythia, correct? What made you want to make the move to LA? So I was at school in Arizona and then I graduated. I studied computer science, graduated, moved back home to San Francisco for a couple months. Um, I was looking for a tech job for a little bit, but then after a while, I was just like, I see the future in Pythia. So I was like, I'm going to move to LA and figure it out. Moved to LA with two months of rent in the bank, but I had like the next two drops of product already paid for and ready to sell. So I was just like, go time. I had to get down here and get active and uh, figure it out. Awesome. And like, what advice would you give to someone else who's like thinking about making the move to LA as a creative? Like, has it been great for your brand? Obviously it, it definitely has. Yeah. Time. LA is what you make of it. I'd say I came here and never been, I've never been to LA before when I moved. Um, so it was really exciting for me. I was hyped up when I got here, but uh, there's so much opportunity, but you can't let it eat you up. Like every day there's so much opportunity out there and knowing that can kind of make you feel like you're not doing enough and everyone in LA is doing so much. So I think it's just about coming to LA and making what you can out of it and don't have high expectations. Just come here and work because it can eat you up if you let it. Awesome. And where should we expect to see the, if you can make someone's day, you should billboard in LA? I want Hollywood, ideally like near Melrose, because that's where I first moved for the first three months was a house off Melrose. So that'd be really cool. Awesome. Awesome. And you've definitely taken that saying and ran with it. Obviously it's on your hoodie right now as well right now. Um, and you've put it on tees as well. Like, has that been successful putting it on clothing? Yeah, I think it kind of breaks me into an audience that there is no audience for. So I can be on anyone with this hoodie. Um, I think it's universal. So, and it makes me feel good knowing like, that's like the one thing I really want to push out there and get in everyone's hands is this saying. And uh, cause I think it makes a difference. So. Absolutely, it's definitely a global message, message for sure. And those pieces are available in Zoomies right now as well, correct, definitely. from Pythia? Yeah, I have uh, two shirts in Zoomies. One says, tell someone you love them, and the other one says, if you can make someone's day, you should. And then I have two graphic tees in there. 
as well. Awesome. Did the tell someone you love them concept come after this one? No, I had them both pretty much at the same time. The first good saying t-shirt I did or was a, a first good saying thing I did was a hoodie that said, tell someone you love them. But at the time I did have the quote posted on my story. So at that moment, I knew that I was going to keep running with this. And like I had the two quotes that I wanted to push and they were there. Awesome. And what made you want to have Pythia displayed and sold in Zoomies? Yeah, so for me, it was getting the, if you can make someone's day message out and the tell someone you love them message out. And then I shopped at Zoomies when I was growing up. So it was like, if I could have sold clothes to my younger self, like that is the most crazy thing ever. So I definitely want to do that. And then uh, it's getting on the youth. I mean, like the youth is what is here to stay. People are always going to grow out of brands, but if I can be a stable figure in the youth, then I'll be here for a while. And there's so many cool people rocking Pythia. Like it's insane how many cool people are rocking Pythia. And when they walk down the street, if a little kid sees them, they're not going to walk up and be like, hey, what hoodie is that? What t-shirt is that? But there's a chance that when they walk in the mall, they see that logo again and they're like, oh, that's that shirt that that cool kid was wearing. So I'm going to cop it. And then there we go. They're part of the family. That's awesome. And in addition to clothing, you've also experimented with releasing rings and other jewelry pieces. What made you want to expand into jewelry and do that? I had a Chrome Hearts ring and another ring that I bought like a vintage store. And for me, it's like if I'm making clothes, I want to make I want to be able to walk out of the house in a full Pythia outfit. So that was on my list of making rings because I had rings. And so I wanted to rock my own ring. Um, the only things I haven't made yet are socks, boxers and my own shoe. So I'm getting down the list, but I do want Pythia everything. So That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Fun. Were the rings hard to make to get manufactured? They're tricky. Um, it was just kind of a learning process though. For me, it was just drawing it, figuring out how to get that animated or in its 3D file. I went on Fiverr for that, so it's not too tricky. And then uh, there's different websites in the United States like Shapeways, et cetera. But I found, a local, over, oh, I found an overseas manufacturer through a friend. Not that hard to find, everyone can find it send the file to them, go through the logistics of what's like metal you want. I want the silver and place the order. Awesome. And are there any other mediums, garments or accessories that you want to experiment with in the future? Yeah, I really just like inventing. So I'm coming out with a puffer jacket in the winter that zips right here. So instead of like having to, I just remember snowboarding and being really annoying, pulling that Velcro flap over pulling that zipper down and gets stuck in the fabric and like jammed. So I have a jacket coming out with two zippers right here as well. So you can just unzip, unzip and flap down to drink water and do whatever you want to do. So I think with clothing, my goal is just trying to be innovative. Awesome. Awesome. And speaking of innovation, you know, you've also been really active in the crypto space as well. How did you get involved with that? Definitely. Uh, my junior year of college, I, I've always been a saver, so I always save my money. I never really buy Christmas presents or buy myself birthday presents. I just want money. So I put, I always save my money. And when I found out about Bitcoin and stuff, I put my money straight into Bitcoin and Ethereum. And by my junior year, it wasn't much, but I had enough money to start Pythia. So I took all the money out. Bitcoin was going down at that time. So I took what I had left and I started that into Pythia, like it just created my brand from from crypto. And then as we've spoke, like had a big spike in the market lately, I've uh, just been gone into the NFT market. I'm still active in crypto itself, but yeah, it's been really fun. That's awesome. And like, what do you think of NFTs and where do you see NFTs going? I think they're really useful. Um, I, I think like the best power case I've seen for it is house deeds, car titles, all that kind of stuff. Right now it's transferred by a piece of paper and a bank has to agree on this type of thing. So if it's on just a token to token basis, it eliminates the middleman. So I think that's just a really good way of explaining it to people is if we tokenize things, it's easier for it to transfer between people and be legitimate compared to having middlemen for everything. Absolutely. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and so recently, you know, this past summer, you also had a pop up collab with Crash Vancouver. What made you want to collaborate with Ryan and do that? Me and Ryan have been boys for a while. Um, I've made it a point to mostly collab with like the people I've grown with. So 
uh, I Ryan's been on that list. He was coming out to Los Angeles, and it just it, it happened. So we planned a Los Angeles theme drop. It went a little bit astray, but it was like a future uh, Los Angeles theme drop, and uh, we put it together the month before he came, and then as he was here, we came out with came up with a few more pieces and threw that pop up, screen printed free T-shirts for everyone, uh, invited all the homies. So yeah, that was really cool. Awesome. And how did the pop-up go? Was it successful? Yeah, it was really cool. I uh, was worried people weren't going to show up, but we had to line out the door. Um, I couldn't stop screen printing shirts the whole time. It was it was madness. Like, it was insane, but it was uh, also just a huge blessing meeting everyone. So, that yeah, was really cool. Awesome. And are you planning on doing other live events here in the near future as well? Yeah, definitely. They just take a lot of planning, and I think I'm at this stage where, like, I've done the first one, I kind of figured it out, and I just want the next one to be super badass so uh i'm planning things i want to figure it out because they're super they're so fun so yeah definitely gonna plan some more awesome and who are some other people that you would want to collaborate with in the future so i've collabed with Siegs. i've collabed with ryan now i want to collab with diego or reduciano or vital studios um who else i want to collab with hard jewelry i want a collab with young chicken pox i want to collab with Damn, there's so many. Ill Effect, Jack is Christ. Like, the list goes on. But um, all the homies that I grew with pretty much, like all the guys that I've talked to since day one, that's who I want to collab with first. That's awesome. And who are some other, you know, up and coming creatives that we should watch out for? Yeah, uh, my radar right now is Young Chicken Pox. That's the, his stuff's going crazy. Um, Always show love to like Siegs and Jack is Christ and Lil Effect. But there's so much young talent out there. Like I see it on the Vaughn space every day. Um, yeah, they're keeping it hot. So there's a lot of competition out there. Everyone's got to be on top of their game. No slacking anymore. But yeah, there's a lot of hot talent. Awesome. Love to hear it. Um, and what should we expect to see next from Pythia? I'm just continuing on the path. Like I have this big winter collection coming out with a lot more cut and sew. So I think that's kind of the route I'm going is now that I have the audience for it, I can make a lot of cut and sew items and not have to worry about sitting on uh, sitting on them after. So I've been really happy to order bulk and all these cut and sew pieces and try these like crazy zippers and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'd say to stay tuned for. Awesome. Sounds good. And what do you want Pythia to be known for at the end of the day? I want Pythia to be known as like a community streetwear brand. Um, I want it to be something that is a staple of the community and something that people have grown with. So ideally, like I get on you in the youth and you're rocking with Pythia until the day you die. So that's what I want. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, this is the first Pythia interview. Well, second, actually, we did our first interview two years ago. So this is our first video interview for the Avant YouTube, um, first of many. But who do you think we should interview next for the Avant YouTube? Jack is Christ, Siegs, um, Crash. I don't think you've interviewed Ryan, Diego, Will from Our Jewelry. Um, yeah, there's tons. Awesome. Those ones come to mind first. Sounds good. Well, first video interview of many for Avant. Definitely. Glad to have you here, Jack. Thank you. Excited Appreciate for what's it. coming.